Now let's get into the moment where Selena started to realize who Yolanda really was. Things started going downhill when Selena's family suspected that Yolanda was stealing money from them. Selena's father began to receive several complaints from fans who claimed they never received merchandise that they purchased from the fan club. And on March 9th, 1995, the family confronted Yolanda about their issues. And that's when the close relationship began to sour. So they pretty much accused her of embezzling funds from the business and that she has stolen over $60,000. In a heated confrontation with Selena, her father, her sister, Yolanda denied any wrongdoing, arguing that she was in possession of documents that would exonerate her. But of course, she never produced these documents because they never existed. She was stealing money. And even despite these accusations, Selena didn't fire her right away. She actually told her sister on March 25th, 1995 that she was planning on firing Yolanda soon. I want to play you guys a clip of Yolanda talking about her relationship with Selena. Did you steal any money from Selena's business? No, ma'am. Not ever. Can you tell me if you were angry? Frustrated? No, I was never angry. I was never frustrated. There were allegations that you were in love with her. And that's not true either. And if people think that Selena and I had a lesbian relationship, you're not a fan of Selena. To be honest, I never really thought that they had like some lesbian relationship because clearly Selena's not into Yolanda. I think Yolanda like almost wants to be Selena or just is so obsessed that it is a sickness. I mean, clearly it's a mental health issue. This woman was so obsessed that Selena couldn't even really tell. I mean, at one point, I guess like, Yolanda's family had a bunch of Selena's old clothing because Yolanda would go in and just steal it. And it makes me question like, what is this obsession? Because I don't think it's like, romantic maybe it's romanticized in some ways but it also just seems like she kind of wants to be her or wants to be so close to her i i cannot relate I, i've never really <laughs> never been that big of a fan yolanda's family has a suitcase of selena's clothing the suitcase is filled with stage outfits music video outfits and outfits selena wore for press events Yukaka had a key to Selena's home giving her easy access to steal them. Yolanda's family claims that Selena gave them the suitcase to hold because she was going to run away with her alleged lover doctor, Martinez. Martinez himself has said this was not true. Now remember, she was confronted on like March 9th. By March 13th, she had hired a lawyer to draft up a resignation letter, even though she had basically been fired by the family. Yolanda also went on to purchase a gun, which she later said was to protect herself from Selena's father, Abraham. Which honestly, I don't think he was a threat to her, but he was probably standing up for Selena because Selena had a hard time standing up against Yolanda. But strangely, records show that Yolanda returned the revolver to the store just days later, only to repurchase a gun on March 26. Based on Yolanda's account, Selena didn't completely cut ties with her after the fallout, but an employee at Selena's boutique said the star intended to officially fire her after she got the last of her remaining financial documents back. On March 30th, Yolanda called Selena and told her to come to her room at the Days Inn alone to pick up the documents. Selena came with her husband, who waited outside while the two talked. Here's a little bit of an interview with Yolanda talking about what led up to her purchasing these weapons. Why did you decide you needed a gun? It was after threats had been made against my life. Who threatened you? Her father. Abraham Quintanilla threatened you. Yes. Quintanilla insists he never threatened Sal Devar. He's convinced that she bought the gun to kill Selena. She saw me as the person who initiated this. She saw me as the enemy. What, how much more could, he, could she hurt us than killing Selena? Is there any way Selena or her family could have seen this kind of a death coming? No. Now, a lot didn't come from this meeting, and you know Selena did not get those documents, but she decided to go back to visit Yolanda the day after without her husband, so now she's completely alone. Now that Yolanda has Selena alone, she decided to try to manipulate her by telling her that she had been R-worded on a recent trip to Mexico. Selena took Yolanda to the hospital, but the hospital would not perform an exam on her because she was not a resident of that county, which sounds pretty stupid, but I guess it's like out of the city's jurisdiction. One nurse revealed that 
Selena appeared to be frustrated when Yolanda started to give inconsistent information about her alleged attack. So she tells, you know, Selena that she went through this and now her story's not adding up. The two eventually left the hospital and went back to the motel. When they got back to her room, the women began to argue. A maintenance worker at the day's end said he heard a loud boom that sounded like a flat tire before he saw a young woman in a jogging suit running and screaming. He says, I saw another woman chasing her. She had a gun. The other woman stopped before Selena reached the lobby, and I guess Selena then ran inside to go and grab some staff members. Selena began to slowly collapse on the floor in a pool of blood from the bullet wound in her back. Selena used her last words to identify the name of her killer, Yolanda in room 158, and then her eyes rolled back in her head. So her last words were spent exposing this woman for just killing her. Here is some information from the reports. At 11.48, Yolanda produced the gun and fired it into Selena's right shoulder when she turned to flee. Selena was bleeding and crying and ran into the hotel lobby, screaming, somebody help me. At that point, Yolanda was following her, screaming, bitch, but did not get into the lobby. These people are at a days in motel. Nobody's expecting this to happen, so they quickly call the police to get some help there. Where, what is your location? Uh, days in motel. It's 901 Navigation Boulevard. What's wrong, man? We have a woman ran in the lobby, said she's been shot. She's laying on the floor and there's blood. Okay, what room number? Okay. Where are you? Uh, what room? How old is she? She looks about 20. Okay, who saw her? Where is she? She's in the lobby right now? Yes, ma'am. She just passed out. Okay. okay. So there, I don't know. I already have to call in. I think you need to send a police unit, too. You don't know anything else about who might have done it or anything like that? It's another lady. That's all I know. We're trying to find out. Um, her name? Yes. Yolanda? Yolanda? Uh-huh. She's a suspect? Yes, ma'am. What's her last name? Uh, S-A-L-D-I-V. Can you imagine having one of the biggest singers there in your hotel at the days and just like dead? It just sounds so chaotic and devastating and not how Selena deserved to go at all. She was shot in the back with a caliber revolver and the bullet shattered an artery in her collarbone before exiting her chest, the effects of which also negatively impacted her brain function. So even if she survived that, she would have had maybe something off with her brain, I'm assuming that's why they included that. Doctors later said that she was already brain dead by the time she reached the hospital. Selena died just a few weeks before her 24th birthday. When police arrived at the scene, they found Yolanda locked in her pickup truck with the handgun pointed at her temple crying, I can't believe I killed my best friend. She kept the police at bay for nearly 10 hours in a rainy standoff before she was arrested. Remember Martin Gomez, that guy that worked with Yolanda who then resigned? Here's an interview of him talking about how Yolanda just wasn't a good person. She was trying to put a barrier between Selena and I, and Selena and anybody, you know? And um, it, it just got really bad towards the end. What was your sense of the hold that Yolanda seemed to have over Selena. Selena trusted her. She was trusting. She was caring. She was very naive. You know, and Yolanda jumped on that. Selena was Yolanda's life. She had no other life. So bills weren't being paid? The bills weren't being paid, you know, and, and I'd tell her, what's going on? And she goes, she'd say, I send that check. She was manipulative. She was mean. She was when you heard Selena had been shot, what occurred to you? I knew it was Yolanda. Instantly. She wanted to get back at Selena, and she figured, hey, I did all this for you. If I can't have you, no one else can, and she killed her. So, of course, Yolanda was in shock after this. She cannot believe that she did this to Selena, even though it seemed like she kind of, like, planned it. I mean, she's claiming that she needed protection from Selena's father, Abraham, but, like, really, did you? Yolanda was threatening to hurt herself, and then she eventually gave up and expressed remorse for her actions. Yolanda pled not guilty to the crime, please, claiming the shooting was accidental, but a jury convicted her of first-degree murder. She received the maximum sentence of life in prison with no potential for parole. Until March 2025, wait, that's coming up pretty soon, oh no. She is at the Mountain View Unit in Gatesville, Texas, where she spends 23 hours a day isolated in her nine feet by six feet cell, where she is held in order to protect her from death threats that other people 
have put on her. So other inmates want Sel- well, want you know justice for Selena. So they want to take out Yolanda. So now Yolanda has to be in isolation to avoid just getting hurt by the other women. Ooh. And honestly, Yolanda does seem just incredibly mentally ill. I mean, looking at her interviews, she has such a distorted like perception of her relationship with Selena that it's really hard to comprehend. Here's more of an interview she did. What happened that morning when Selena arrived? Did she say she wanted to fire you? That ne- never, never. She never told me that. I was telling her to leave. And I said, I... It's over, Selena. It's over. I can't work for you no more. I can't work for you no more. She went down. She grabbed my feet and told me not to leave her. And I picked her up and I told her, just leave. And I grabbed the gun, put it to my head. Pull the thing back. And I said, if you don't leave, I'm going to do it to Lena. And she got up and she says, Mom, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. I'm going to close the door. And when she was walking to the door, she was going at an angle. And I told her, don't close the door. And in that instant, the gun went off. But why didn't it hit you? Because I was pointing to the door and it just went. Honestly, I kind of call BS because if you guys listen to like crime podcasts, like I love Crime Junkie. It's my favorite podcast. But like those things just don't really happen. Like an accidental like shooting moment like this. I mean, I guess she's saying that she pulled, had it towards her head and then like pointed out the door saying don't close the door and then shot her then. But Yolanda goes on to say that she did not try to hit Selena, that she didn't even realize that she was hit. That doesn't add up with the reports that like she was chasing her afterwards with the gun calling her a bitch. Like none of that really makes sense and it makes me question whether Yolanda has completely rewritten what happened in that moment to like cater her own feelings. Did you know she was hit? No, I did not know. There was blood along the door seal. I didn't even look at the door. But there was blood all over the room. How could you not see it? The pictures that I see, they're dots. Saldivar left the blood spattered room and headed to her car with the gun still in her hand. She said she was looking for Selena. The next nine hours became a standoff with police. Saldivar sat in her car, gun to her head, negotiating into the night before finally giving herself up. Many people have wondered that if you were really trying to yourself, why didn't you commit suicide when you were in the car all those nine and a half hours? There were many things going through my mind. I could hear her. In my mind, telling me, stay behind, stay behind. I hear her tell me, you don't commit suicide because I'll never see you in heaven. So she thinks Selena is in her mind telling her to stay around for what? Like, I think at this point, Selena is not on your side. 